what you can do and how you can use it um, to just really take control of that creative side of your organizations. Um, we, we will be covering the basics and I know some of you might have past experience. So if we go over any of that, um, that you already know, then hopefully we can add some extra um, tips that can um, improve uh, what you're doing on Canva. So by the end of the workshop, um, you'll be using Canva Pro for free, um, like Laura just said, um, which is great because you don't have to spend a penny. Um, you'll be inviting your team to join you on Canva. Uh, you'll have your brand kit uploaded, uh, which is a really helpful tool that we'll talk about a bit more in a minute. Uh, you'll be learning Canva's key features um, and how to use them to create visual content. You'll know some helpful tools and resources outside of Canva that can help uh, support you creating. Um, but most importantly, you're going to feel empowered, hopefully, and confident um, in creating for your organisations. Um, this one's most important because as third sector organisations, you're coming from a place of passion. Um, you care about what you're doing, so you're in a really good place to create some of this visual um, content to communicate with people. Oh, there we go. So uh, yeah, first it's get you all started on Canva. Um, we're gonna be focusing on Canva's non-profit tool, um, which is a program they kind of developed in 2015 um, or 16. Um, and it just means that for non-profits, um, and they do use that, use that term quite loosely, because um, I know there'll be social enterprises and, and different organizations that are, um, have a social focus, you do come under um, that bracket. Um, in terms of what Canva, Canva's definition is. So you'll get all these premium design tools at no extra cost, uh, and some of the things you get are listed here. Um, so it's loads of templates, um, and these templates are all professionally designed and created, so you can feel confident um, that the designs work and the template's really effective. Over 75 million images, um, stock images for you to use in your designs. If you haven't already got kind of brand photography um, or you haven't got the funding to, to spend on photography just yet. Um, over three and a half million graphics. Uh, these are little extra touches you can add to your design to add your brand's personality in. Uh, over 3000 fonts. Uh, you can save your brand colors, fonts and logos, which is the brand kit tool um, we just touched on. Uh, this is one of my favorite tools. It makes it really quick um, and really consistent, which is a hard thing to get when designing. Um, resizing projects easily with Magic Resize. So this is when you create a post for Instagram. You might just want to use that post again on Facebook or Twitter. Um, so with one button on Canva, um, we can optimize these sizes. Uh, you'll also have unlimited folders and 100 gigabytes of storage, um, which is loads. And we find this really useful for the Goodness Collective. We, we work on loads of different projects and um, it's good to be able to separate the designs into different projects you're working on. Um, and you also have access to animations and GIFs, which is really helpful now, on, especially on social media, where they're prioritizing um, moving image and video content um, above still images. So what I'm going to do um, now is just show you through how this application process looks. But after this session, um, Laura will step, uh, share with you a step-by-step -step guide um, with all this info in and all the links in. Um, so you can either watch the recording back and follow along that way or follow the step-by-step -step guide. Um, but I'm just going to give you a little visual um, view of how this looks. Um, so if we go to that link there, I did have it up a minute ago, but I must have got rid of it. Then you'll be able to see um, the apply now button. Um, so if you click on this, um, you don't have to already have um, an account on Canva to do it this way. So you can either set up your account first for free, or you can go this way and set up your account um, through the nonprofit section. Um, so if you click on get verified now, and it's a quick form um, that asks you really simple questions like your organization's name, your website, uh, that is optional if you don't have a website, a website, the size of your organization and the type of organization you work in. Um, and then what it'll ask you is uh, additional documents to support your application. So for when I was doing this for the Goodness Collective, 
I just took a screenshot of our company's information um, from company's house um, and that worked first time. So um, that's a really simple process. Other things you can use are um, charity numbers if you have them or CIC numbers um, if you have those. Um, and then once you follow on this step, it'll just ask you to outline briefly how the work you do adds social value to communities um, and what kind of work it is that you do. Um, and it will take about a week to get a, a verification on your um, on your application. Um, but while you're waiting for your application to come back, you can set up the rest of your Canva account. So um, the first thing you want to do when you set up uh, with Canva is get your team on Canva with you. Um, some of you might just be working on your own, um, but some of you might have uh, other team members in your organization that you want to share designs with and you want to give feedback to on the things that you're creating. Um, so you can do all this while you're waiting for your um, application to come back and anything that you do um, set up, um, any profile settings you add will just automatically transfer to your nonprofit account when that comes through. Um, so don't worry about um, waiting a week for that to come back before you set some of this up. So I'm just going to show you quickly now um, how we'd go about setting up um, How we go? Sorry about that, guys. How we go about setting up uh, a team in Canva? So this is what the main screen will look like uh, when you go into Canva. Um, you'll have all different templates down here that you might want to try. Uh, there's different tools on the side that we'll cover in a minute. Um, but on the top is where we're looking for now. So next to this, create a design button. You'll see a little gear icon. And um, if we click into that, that'll take you through um, your account information. So on the left-hand side here, you can see team details, people, groups, billing and teams, and purchase history. Um, and this is where you'll also be able to see um, your um, nonprofit status um, should come up here when that's approved. So if we go to billing and teams just here on the left and scroll down, you will see create a team. So if you click on that, um, and just give your team a name, um, either the name of your organization or a project you're working on. And that will set up your team. And also guys, as you're going through Canva, it'll give you uh, loads of pop-ups like this. Uh, I think naturally, because we're bombarded by pop-ups, we just X off them. But there's some really great tips on these um, if you're struggling or if you need a bit more help. So um, you can always follow those as you go through. Um, so in your team here, you'll be able to see any designs you've been working on, any folders, uh, any templates you like, any apps you've connected, um, and the people in your team. So this is where you can start to invite new people to your team. Um, you can either do it here, um, invite people, and you can type their email address in uh, and invite them that way so they get an email that they can click on to accept your invitation, or you can get an invite link, um, copy that link, and then save that for whenever you need to share that link with a team. And anyone that has that link will be able to access um, your team's profile on Canva. Um, I'm just going to switch back. Um, to my main team to show you how it looks. So in my team, there's only me and the Goodness Collective. We are the same people. There's only two of us in the organization at the minute. Um, but what you can do here under role is let people um, give the people different permissions. So with members, they might be able to view and uh, give feedback on designs, um, but not change anything. Um, template designers can um, obviously design templates, give you feedback, um, and an administrator will have all the um, permissions to do. So 
um, that's just something to bear in mind of um, who you want to have access to what um, to what features within Canva. Um, so that that's uh, getting your team with you on Canva, uh, and then once your team's there with you, um, the next step is to get all your branding uploaded. Um, so I don't know if you all have branding ready to go, or if that's something you'd be wanting to use Canva for, there is some really great tools on there. Um, but this brand kit tool is my favorite tool, and it is the reason why I always come back to Canva over other design software that um, I, you'd call probably industry standard or, or that you have to pay for, is because it helps to keep things really consistent, and it's just really quick and easy um, to put your brand's personality across anything you design. So your brand kit will be things like your logo, uh, your colors, any fonts you use, uh, any other elements you use um, in marketing um, or on your social media that makes your brand stand out um, from the crowd. So th this is actually really interesting that 47% of digital marketers find it difficult to create consistent visual content. Um, I think that is something that when you're designing, you want to make sure you're keeping everything as consistent as possible. Um, especially in like social media today, you have like a matter of seconds um, to capture someone's attention and get them engaging with you. Um, so if they scroll through Instagram or Facebook and they notice your colors, um, the way you style your posts and they know, oh, that's the goodness collective. They gave us some really valuable information last time. I'm going to take a minute to stop and interact with this. Um, then being consistent, it's just a really easy way to get people engaged quickly. So um, let's do, sorry guys, I have, to, I have created this um, presentation in Canva just to show you that I, I am confident in, in its capabilities. So I have to keep switching from that to the web version. Um, but what I'm going to show you is that brand kit and how that might look uh, when you go to add in your um, organization's branding. So if we go to the brand kit section here on the left under tools, you'll see I've already got a couple of different um, brands set up. So I've got the Goodness Collective, our main branding, and I've got the Wave of Change. That's one at my door, but they can leave it there. Um, and that's the Wave of Change, uh, which is a kind of personal and professional development program we run for women that are out of work in Stockport. And um, so you will obviously have these when you first go on, but if you look in the right here, you can add a brand kit. Uh, and one tip I'll give you to make this really quick when you come to do it is have all your logos, colors, um, images, anything you might want to add to a brand kit saved in a folder on your desktop. Um, so you can just go into that and upload it all really quickly. Um, I'm just going to use our branding again to show you um, how this might look. So here we can see um, this useful pop-up again, which if you click on it, will give you a little run through of how to do it. Um, so if we start with our brand logos, here we can see I've got everything labeled in a folder, uh, which makes it easy. So we have four main colors we use um, for the Goodness Collective, different variations of a blue, um, different variations of a green, and different variations of a yellow and a pink. Um, and again, that's something to consider when um, designing for your organizations uh, to keep things consistent and simple, maybe just stick to three or four colors um, that you consistently use uh, when designing. So I can just go through these and you can do this yourself when you come to do it. Um, I can add all my logos in. And we'll just add one white one in. So we've got that ready to go. Uh, so they'll all stay there. Uh, and this here is brand colors. So what this has tried to do is take uh, a color from the logos I've just uploaded, um, which is a really useful tool. So we can keep that white one there. Um, and then we can also add other colors in. So when you come to add your colors in, uh, the way colors work in designs is they have different codes. So this is a six digit hex code, which will be used uh, across Canva and different platforms. And um, you also have RGB codes, um, which are sometimes used, which is 
just red, green, and blue, um, and other codes which you don't need to know about for printing um, CMYK. Um, but um, to get this is something that you might want to um, maybe come back to me for um, after the session if you don't know your uh, brand's exact color codes, and uh, that's something we can do really quickly. There is tools online to do that, um, but I've not put them up just because. Uh, they can be very hit and miss, and I don't want to give out any advice that um, isn't going to uh, help you um, because I've, I've tried it before with colour codes and it doesn't always get them right. So what I've done here is I've saved my colours. Um, and I don't think you can guys can see this because I'm not sharing it right now, but I'm just going to copy and paste um, my colour codes in. Um, and I'll just do a few. Um, so you can see what that looks like. So when you do this, you're just working through everything you think you might need. And you can see as it's coming up, it's trying to save a few of them. Um, so it'll, it'll probably do that for yours as well. Oh, it's doing them all. It's never done that before. It usually just does one or two. There we go. Um, now it started getting a bit. So um, if you do need help with finding out the exact colour codes, um, you can, I'll leave my information in the chat at the end and you can come back to me and um, we'll get those all sorted. So I've just got one more colour to go. Let's see if it's already in. Yeah, it is now. I thought that was the green. Um, so your colours and your logo is going to be your two main things. Um, brand fonts are something that um, not every uh, business has um, straight away ready to use. Um, there is loads of fonts on Canva. So if you like find the font you like the look of, um, you can choose it from a list here. Um, and as we saw before, there's over 3,000 of these. So it might take you some time to find one perfect for your business. But if you have already got... Um, a typeface or a font that you use uh, in your branding and you have it saved, you can upload it just like you would uh, with Canva's own font. And that's going to take a minute. Oh, not too long. Um, just because it's a bigger file than the colors were and the logos were. Um, so I'll add these in. And the great thing about Canvas fonts as well is they are free to use. Um, so rather than going on a website and trying to find one that's free to use, sometimes they look free to use, but they need licensing. Um, so just be careful when you're, if you're looking on the internet for a typeface, um, to play it safe, you can stick with Canvas fonts. Um, so that's all the main elements we need for our branding, um, uploaded and ready to go. And these will be saved and everyone in your team will be able to see these uh, when they come to create. So that is uh, the brand kit is now uploaded. We've got our team with us on Canva and we've got all these pro features um, at no extra cost ready to use. So then what you want to start do, start doing, um, which is probably why you've come to Canva, is using their professionally created templates um for your marketing um i know someone in the chat before said they wanted to do posters and advertising um some of you will want to use it for social media so these templates uh cover loads of different um situations you've got ones for special occasions christmas halloween um hanukkah uh, diwali anything you might want they're all on there and this is just an extra way you can feel confident in um, taking control of that creative side of your business because you know these have been professionally designed, uh, they work and they're effective. So to design a template, I think what we're gonna do now is a demonstration and we're just gonna get some interaction from you guys in choosing which way we go with the design, uh, what template we want to stick with. Um, so as we run through, there'll be um, kind of multiple choice. And if you just put the number in the chat, uh, Laura will let me know what you've all decided and we can work on designing something together and showing you just how easy it is uh, to take Canva's own templates and put your touch on it. 
so when we run through this demonstration, these are the steps that I always use. Uh, we're going to be browsing through the list of templates. And at the start, like we've seen, there's almost half a million templates. So when you first do this, take some time to think what works for your organization, um, what reflects your personality and what your audience is going to like to engage with. Um, then we're going to customize it with any information we need. Uh, our brand colors using the brand kit feature we just uploaded. We're going to resize it using the magic resize tool. So this is really helpful. Um, one button tool when designing. And like I said before, if you design for Instagram, that's not always going to look great on a Facebook post. It might crop it weird or it might be a bit blurry. So Canvas saved all these optimal sizes for you ready to use. And then we're going to show you how to download it onto your desktop and sharing it is sharing just the same way you'd share any Instagram or Facebook post. Um, so yeah, we'll run through this demonstration now. And uh, Laura, if you just let me know what the people are saying. Um, so up here on the top, we can see a templates tab um, next to home. And this will give you uh, loads of options um, and little ways to get started. So you've got videos, presentations, Instagram posts, Facebook posts, uh, documents, posters, stories, everything you need to get started. Um, but we're going to design a template, a social media template for today's workshop um, to advertise the workshop. So if we were to have a search, um, we might just type in workshop to see something a bit more bespoke for what we're trying to design. And you'll see here, it'll bring up all these um, workshop related templates that people have designed. Um, and we're gonna want to design a Facebook post. So if we look on the categories at the side, um, we can see all the different templates here. Um, so if you click on Facebook post, that'll narrow it down to just the posts that are right size for Facebook. Um, so we'll do, um, we can take your guys' opinion on this top row of posts here, uh, this top six, um, number one being this far left one and number six being this far right one. Uh, so if you just put in the chat which one appeals most to you, um, and we'll take that forward and show you how to um, put your touch on it. Cool, so we've got a few fives. Five, lovely. Two. Another five. Five winning. Four. Another two. Another five. I'm going to say five's the winner here. Five's one. So great. So we'll take five forward. And that, guys, is just um, another way of, of design. Good design is one of the easiest things to test because if your eye's drawn to it out of the rest of the things you can see, um, there's probably something in that design that's working well. So in number five, it might be the hierarchy, um, just the way the, the words are laid out here. Um, it's could be the fact um, this woman's smiling at you. It could be the bright colours. Um, so whatever is appealing to you, um, have a play around, um, but just make sure it works for your organisation. Um, if you're an organisation focused on sustainability and the environment, you won't want to use something um, really harsh um, with loads of like techie lines all over it. Um, you might want to use something softer and more organic. And just think about what's going to reflect your personality. So we've chosen number five and we can take this forward with customizing this template. And if we like number five, um, but we don't want to use it right now, we can star it for later. Uh, and I'll show you how to get those up in a minute. So customizing the template will take you to a new tab uh, in your browser. Um, so you don't have to worry about if you've been working on something else, losing that. Um, 
So what we're going to start with here is just adding some of uh, the information then. Um, so what we might want to do is um, intro to Canva um, under here for non profits. Um, and what I'd say is at the start when you're, if you're not so confident about um, getting really creative with the design and and experimenting loads is just trusting the design. Um, it's been designed like that for a reason and it works. So, um, you know, feel, feel free to just input the information you need until you start getting um, a bit more confident with experimenting. Uh, so we can put today's date in, uh, the 10th of November, uh, time of the session. And to 11.30 um, and we can put our, inf our social media information. So um, we can that perhaps the Goodness Collective CIC. Um, and as you can see here, guys, this has been a bit too long for the box that was already in. Um, so these arrows around the box um, will help you to um, So I'm just trying to turn this Grammarly off, but I can't right now. Um, this will help you to uh, adjust the boxes. So if we grab the right side and pull it out until it fits, uh, then we can see all that information is fitting in nicely. Um, so this still isn't really looking like the Goodness Collective. Um, so what I might want to do is add our brand typefaces in. Um, so on the top here, we can see all kind of the adjustment tools we might need to change this design. So if I click on a typeface um, or words in the design, it'll give me options to change that font uh, and play around with it. So capital letters, um, underlining bold, color of the typeface, size, and the actual font that we're using. So as we can see here, if I scroll down, this has got my team's uh, brand kit in it. So we'll click on the goodness collective that I've just uploaded. And we can see that platform, which is the typeface we use, um, is ready to go there. So if I click on this, um, that's looking more like us. That might be a bit too big. So we can size it down. Um, and again, we'll just work through uh, turning this into something that um, shows more of the Goodness Collective personality. So that's the typeface is done. Um, the next thing might be the colors on the design. Um, so this is good. I actually didn't think it would give me an option to change this colors because I thought that this thing in the background might just be an image, um, but it isn't. So um, we can start adding our colors in. Um, so let's have a vote again um, from the four main colors, pink, green, blue, and yellow. Um, which way you guys should uh, see this design going. Uh, if you put them in the chat again. We've got a few greens, <laughs> lots of greens, green, green, green. Everyone loves the green. Everyone's for green, we like green. Um, so we'll go with the green then. So uh, in the Goodness Collective, we used two of every color, apart from the blue where we used three. Um, so, if we go light green there, that looks horrible because it's mixed with the purple. Um, and then we put the dark green there. So I don't know about you guys, um, that, that's not too bad. Uh, it's probably not something I'd do, um, but you can just experiment um, with different things here. So um, maybe if we try the blue, That might be a bit better. I think I prefer that. So sorry, I'm going to override people in the chat. Um, but that's the main thing about using Canva is um, you can feel safe because until you upload that or download it and upload it to your social media, um, only you and your team can see it. So just just have fun uh, experimenting and playing around and see what works. And um, what you do first time is probably not always going to work. Um, but after a while, you just naturally know um, you can use your intuition and see 
uh, what what feels right for you and your organisation. Um, so Sorry, the, Ethan, we've just got a question from yeah, Shelley. Well, Can you yeah. remind me how to find and update brand with options, please? Do you mean, Shelley, to up, up, upload your brand kit? Yes, yeah. So just, yeah, reminder on how to upload your brand kit. Yeah. Just a quick, yeah, just a quick recap. Yeah, of course. Um, let's go back through that. Um, so, um, was it Shelley? Uh, if you're in your main yeah. uh, Canva home screen here that we can see, um, you'll have these tools down the side, uh, down the left-hand side, uh, and under the tools option, you'll see brand kit. Um, so if you click on that, um, you won't have anything showing up yet, but on the top right here, uh, just below create a design, you'll see add brand kit. Um, and you can put in the name of your organization. And that will um, give you the option to start adding your logos, uh, your colors and your fonts in. Um, and the way you do that is just click on the add button that'll open up um, your files on your computer. So if you have all these saved, ready to go, um, that'll make it a lot quicker. And if you have them labeled, you'll know where they are and you just open them like you would open any other picture or file um, on any other website you use. Um, I'm sure if you need any more help on uploading your brand kit or anything specific on Canva, then um, Ethan would be um, able to, to help you with that. Sorry, sorry. So she's actually, Shelley's just said, I meant where is it on the template options on the oh, left? Yeah. Did you just scroll down? Yeah, sorry, sorry, Shelley. I'm sorry. so used to doing this. I've just skimmed over that. Um, yeah, so we we open this template up, and when you click on a different element in the design, so say this heading here, um, the the options for your brand will be under that specific uh, element. So on here, it's the font. So we can see here, I've got fonts I've recently used. And just below that, it's the Goodness Collective CIC. So that is the brand kit for the Goodness Collective. Um, and if you open that, you'll get different brand kits um, for, for other projects or organizations you're working with. Um, and that there has just got all my fonts saved. And similarly with the colors, um, like we were just changing the colors of this design, if we click on the colors in the top left corner here, um, you'll be able to see the brand kits again there. Um, so you can select a brand kit and it'll give you the colors you've uploaded. Um, and then I suppose the next thing to be would be uploading your logo on a design. So on the left-hand side here, uh, we've got the templates, elements, uploads, anything like photos and videos, um, text and logos. So if we click on logos here, you can see all the logos I've just uploaded for this brand kit. Uh, and if we were to pick one, let's say the white one, it'll bring it in. Uh, we can resize it really easily, um, just using these white dots around the object. Um, and we can place that where I want. Um, so does that answer your question, Shelley, um, about using the brand kit features within a design? Yes, yeah. She yeah says, thank great. you. Yes. Um, yeah. So now we've got our logo in, we just want to position it uh, somewhere that works for the design. And one thing Canva does, it'll give you these pink lines around everything, which are guides. So if you move a design around, uh, if you move an object around and you try and pick one of these lines, um, they're a really useful tool for just. Um, for leading you to where, where things look like they might fit uh, and keeping them lined up with the rest of the design as well. Um, so if we look at some of the other features we've got when using a template, we've got elements here and you can see things I've recently used. So this is anything like um, graphic elements like arrows or as we can see here, we've got the dots in this design. Um, in the Goodness Collective designs, we use a lot of hand-drawn arrows um, and scribble effects. Um, so we could add some of them in if we wanted to. 
Um, and all we'd do is we'd find a design we like. So we can search arrow um, and it'll come up with a load here and things like graphics, um, animated graphics are great to add in because um, without making the rest of the design move, you've then turned this design into essentially a moving graphic. So when you upload it to Instagram, um, it's going to show up as um, it's going to be classed as a video so that it gets boosted higher up in the algorithm and um, so more people might see it. Um, and to add these in, just find what you like, click on it and it'll put it in the design somewhere for you. Um, and again, we can use these dots um, to change the size of the design and these underneath, this will move it and this will rotate it. Um, so we can position that uh, where we want to there, have it pointing at the logo. Um, so that's the elements. Um, and the next thing I'd probably tackle this design would be the image. Um, she looks very happy, um, but maybe we want to use a different image um, that says more about uh, the brand or, or what it is that we're trying to say. So if we go to the left-hand side here where our tools are and we see uploads, you'll have images, videos, and audio. Um, so you can see some of the images I've uploaded in the past. Um, so maybe I want to use some of these. Um, or maybe I want to add a video in again, um, and that can help it um, be boosted up in Instagram's algorithm because they're favoring videos at the moment. Um, so if you've got an image you like and that you know you've saved on your computer, or maybe you have brand images that you already use, we can click upload media here. And again, that'll just open the files on your computer. Uh, you can find out where you've saved them. So I've got stock images here uh, and I can go through and find an image that I like. Um, I like this one because she's clearly designing for some kind of um, social uh, in, uh, initiative. Um, so if I open that up, that will load into my uploads and I can just drag that over the image that's already there and it'll replace it. Uh, if I double click on this, I can then position it somewhere more favorable, um, like there. And I think that works really well. Um, but if you haven't got images that you, brand images that you use all the time, or you haven't got an image you've saved somewhere else on your computer, uh, you can use Canvas uh, stock images and add them into your designs. So on Elements again, this is where you'll find anything that you need to search. Um, so if we search um, workshop under photos um, and just go through until you find something that works for you. Um, so again, maybe you like this, but you don't want to use it right now. You can star it for later. Um, and again, we can just drag that over the image that's already there, double click and reposition it somewhere where we like. Um, so that's that's most of the features. The other features you probably like to know about is text. So if there's something missing here that we haven't said, or the template we picked didn't have enough text in it for what we wanted, we can add a heading, a subheading, um, a bit of body copy in there, or you've got these text presets ready to go uh, for you to use. So if we were to add that in there, it would just come up as a new uh, element in the design. And then on the top, we've got all the options again to um, adjust it to what we want it to look like. Um, but I think that design really works. I think it's simple, um, it's clear, it's got the date, it's got the time. Um, maybe actually we need a bit of how do people actually sign up. So if we added body copy, and we put a um, link in our bio uh, so people know to go to your bio to find the link to sign up. Uh, and again, we can adjust this. Um, let's change the color to white like everything else in the design. Um, and let's bump the size up a bit. Uh, and maybe we'd put that there. 
or maybe we'd sit it under there because it's quite an important bit of information. Um, so that design would be ready to go. And the next thing you'd want to do is share it with uh, your team uh, to get some feedback on it. So if you click share just here on the blue set, uh, purple section at the top, um, your team members will come up here. And um, obviously it's just me and my team at the minute. So no one's coming up there, but you can also type in email addresses. Um, or if you've got a large, a large team, you can just search a name in here and they'll come up. Um, and you can also get a link to share. So um, you can copy that link and email it to someone or put it in a chat um, wherever you send your messages. Uh, so some tools just to notice on the top here is the undo tool. So um, again, just feeling confident to experiment because we know we can always go back and we can always go forward. Um, this here that hopefully you can see it's quite, it's pretty unclear, but it says all changes saved. So anything you do when designing on Canva will automatically save. Um, and if there's ever a problem like your internet connection drops, um, which I have all the time, uh, it will say could not save this project. So that's maybe when you'd want to sort your internet out, go into file on the left and just manually save it or save it to a folder. Um, and yeah, I just keep always check um, every now and again after you make a few changes if this is saying saved or not. Um, because I've had things in the past where it said unsaved or not able to save and I've carried on designing and then um, it's reverted back to where it was before I made all the changes. So if you check that often, you can always save it to a folder at the stage it's at um, and just make sure you've got that in the bank. Um, so if we like this design, um, but someone from my team said, actually, I preferred the green, Ethan, you're wrong about that. Um, what we can do is we can click on this button here, which will du duplicate the design. Um, so if we click on that, it'll open them both below each other, um, above and below each other. Um, so the top one is safe there. And if we just call this blue for now, um, and we just want to keep that there ready to go. So if we lock the design, um, that shouldn't make any other changes um, when I go on to edit this. So if someone in my team said, we want to try the green out instead, I can make a change to this um, by putting the green in. And it's not going to change this one. So we can see them side by side, review it with our team again, and decide which one we want to go down. Um, so yeah, I'd love to hear from you guys, blue or green, and then we'll show you how to download um, and resize some templates. One blue. Another blue. Blue, you were right from Shelley. Blue. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Another blue. You can say I'm wrong, guys. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, another all blues. They don't yeah. say uh, criticize your uh, <laughs> design choices either. So let, let's go with blue then. You've made me feel really good about myself. Um, so what we might want to do now is we can either download this straight away, um, ready to use on Facebook, um, because that is the template that we started with, or we might want to resize it uh, and use it on a different social media platform. Um, and I know today, guys, we're running through kind of social media posts, um, but I know some of you will want to do posters um, and printed material and maybe certificates for people that take part in workshops you do. So all of this stuff um, will be exactly the same on a different template if you're doing a poster. Um, all the tools are in the same place. Uh, the way you go about editing a template is the same. And you can also resize those for different sizes as well. Um, so if we click on resize, um, it's going to show up a few um, pre-saved um, sizes here ready to go. So uh, Facebook cover, Instagram post, Instagram story, flyer, um, everything that you might need. And, the, and it's saved the optimal sizes um, for you to use. Now, I'll give you guys a tip around sizing just for Instagram. Uh, it's saying optimal size 1080, 1080, which is just a standard square you see on Instagram. 
Um, if you guys want to give yourselves a little boost above everyone else, if you use these sizes here, which will be in the guide at the end, so you can write these down, but don't worry too much about it. Um, what that's going to do is make it a little bit taller so that when people are scrolling through the Instagram feed, square, 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 your post is going to take up a bit more space so they can't see what's above it or below it or get too distracted. Um, so it's just another little thing you can do to, to put yourself ahead um, of everyone else. So if we were to use just their standard Instagram post sizes, we can press copy and resize. And what that's gonna do, like Canva does with everything, is open it in a new tab, so you don't have to worry about losing what you've already done. Um, and we can see here, it's opened it up. So this white thing is called your canvas, um, which is the area of the design that will be seen um, by people. Um, so you can see there's a bit of space at the top and a bit of space at the bottom. So all I need to do is grab my mouse, uh, click, hold, and drag across everything in the design. I'm just remembering I locked that before. So if I unlock that, so I can make some changes, click and drag, and that'll have everything in the design selected. Uh, on the top in our adjustment tools, if I press group, that'll put everything together in one nice box. Um, so I know if I move it, it's all gonna move. Um, and if I resize it, it's all gonna resize. So what I wanna do is maybe resize it and this is where you experiment again, guys. Um, if I resize this, I've got a feeling it's all not going to fit. So maybe what I'd like to do, um, that, that doesn't fit too bad, actually. Um, so that could work well. And again, if we wanted to check that with our team, we'd share it uh, and we can give them another option of just resizing And group that first. Um, I'd have to do it on this one. Uh, if I press undo, undo on the resizing, and then I could just resize the back of the design um, just to fill up that white space. And maybe my team would prefer that, or maybe I'd decide, um, yeah, that works better. There's more space around the edge. Uh, it's not so full. So once you're happy uh, with your templates and your team has given you uh, approval that you're great at graphic design, then what you do is you're ready to download it, uh, ready to share on social media. So up here where we shared before, where we had unsave, file, uh, save and resize, we can press download. And what that's going to do is give you a suggestion um, for what file type to download. So for different um, projects, you'll want to use different file types. Uh, this will all be in the guide. I don't want to overwhelm you too much right now. Um, but on social media, you'll want to use a PNG, a portable network graphic. Um, it just keeps it really clear um, and it's favored by, by the platforms. Um, if you're designing something for print, uh, like a poster, uh, you probably want a PDF. Um, and obviously, if we've got uh, some animation in our design, we're going to want to use a GIF. Or if we've got a video, we're going to want to use uh, an MP4 video. Um, so it's it's, it's given that suggested PNG. So that's what we're going to use. Um, we're not going to lower the quality. That may be useful if you're trying to send files just for approval to someone um, and it will lower the, the size of the file. Um, and we can see here, it's given us an option to download both pages that we designed. So the blue and green, um, we decided we don't want the green, so we can untick that and then we can download the blue. So if we click download, that should take a minute, but then that'll download and it'll save um, just in your download file on your computer. Um, there we go. And also we get a shareable link there um, to share it for next time. So that's downloaded there. Um, we can view it on our computer. Um, and then all you've got to do is either get it from your computer to your phone, or if you're using Canva on a mobile, um, which you can do as well. I just prefer to use it on a laptop because um, everything's bigger um, and my fingers aren't the most nimble. So I often press a few buttons at once. Um, get that onto your phone. 
um, and then you're ready to just share it how you would share any other image or um, post on social media. Ethan, what about if you wanted to save it as a specific name? Yeah, so I was just about to do that. So um, what we do here is we can save it uh, normally. And if we click on this at the top, this name is uh, actually editable. So if I was to type in intro to, to Canva, um, and this was for Instagram. So if I type Instagram post there, uh, and that will have saved it automatically. And if I want to put it into a folder, um, I can have uh, a folder save there. Um, so that, that's the basics of um, templates. Um, if anyone's got any questions on templates, maybe we'll just do them now because that was quite a lot to go through in one go. Has anyone got any questions on temp the template feature specifically? Shelley says, can you remind of the lock, unlock and grouping? Yeah, of course, Shelley, yeah. Um, so if there's anything we we don't want to, we don't want to change our design, um, then up here, we just select the element we don't want to change. So say it was this back color. Um, and up here on our adjustment tools, which are always just on the top, you'll see this little lock button. Um, so if you press that, that's locked. That's not going anywhere. I can't change the color of it. Uh, I can't resize it. So that's safe. And then just the same when you want to unlock it, ready to edit again, unlock there. Um, and duplicating. So if we want to duplicate a whole design, like we did with the green and blue, um, what we can do is on the top of the canvas here where it says page. So if we call that green, um, we would be able to see, we can delete the page and we can add a blank page or we can duplicate the page. So if we duplicate that, that's gonna open them all up in a row, um, ready to try and experiment different things. Um, and you can also duplicate um, elements in your design. So maybe we wanted another one of these arrows, we want it the same size. What we can do is duplicate that and have that ready to go uh, there as well. Um, and with any of these elements, you can delete them uh, at the top here using delete, or you can just use your delete button on your keyboard um, and delete things that way to make it a bit quicker. And grouping as well. Ethan. Yeah, grouping, yeah. So um, any elements we want all to stay together. Um, so like when we move that design, but maybe I, maybe I don't want the whole design. So with the whole design, we just get our arrow um, in somewhere off the page and we can drag it and hold it down to select everything on that page. And up here in our adjustments again, where we saw the lock a minute ago and the duplicate, we can press group. So that's all together now. Um, and when I move that, it's gonna to move together. And when I resize it, it'll be resized together. Um, but maybe you didn't want to group the whole design. And you, so I just wanna group this heading and this heading. What I can do is click on one, hold down shift uh, on my keyboard and click on the other one and press group again. And now those two things are grouped together. Um, so resizing them, they'll both resize together. They'll both always stay the same distance apart. Um, All these tips will be in the in the sheet that we'll send around though. So don't worry too much. There'll be kind of like a step to um, how to guide that, that Ethan will share as well. Yeah, def yeah, definitely guys. This this today is more, um, it's great if you can pick some of this stuff and, and remember it, but I think it, what, what this will do is give you a kind of a visual intro into Canva and sometimes I found myself when you go into a new software or you go to use something and that first look can be really intimidating if you've not seen it before. Um, so just then designing this post really quickly, um, hopefully ease, ease you into that a bit. But yeah, the step-by-step -step guide that I'll label all the tools for you um, and I'll show you how to um, access everything you need to do. Rebecca and Brian, you also have a question. Yeah, um, so not about the templates, but how do you share your saved image with other members of your Canva team. Currently, my designs are only visible by me. Okay, um, so have you got other, um, other members in your team? Um, 
if you've invited them um, like we did before. Um, yeah, we have done that though. So they're all, there's about five different people who've all got their own account. Okay, yeah. But we don't, I don't know how to, we can't see what each other's signs are. So oh, I think really? we're doing, we must be doing something wrong. Yeah, um, they, should, they should all be in the team. So um, if you were to go in your team here on the left-hand side, um, and go under people, I'd say, first of all, just check they're all in there. Um, yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, they're definitely in there. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, uh, what you, what you, what, how the way you share designs is share at the top um, and the people's names should come up. If they're not coming up there, um, maybe it's the permissions that they've been granted. So, um, okay. Uh, so under... You can see the name here, the email address, and the role. So um, maybe you, you need to just um, put try a different uh, role on them. Maybe an administrator or a template designer, um, okay. or and if they're definitely not coming up in the search here, and the roles are all correct, and you're still not finding them, then um, feel free to send me an email after um, because I'd love to get to the bottom of um, why they're not coming up. Um, Do we need to be saving them somewhere specific? Yeah. Um, no, anything you design within a team should come up in your teams. Um, so do you, do you think we're maybe not doing it as a team? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've got. Are you having recent designs here that you can't share? Well, so are all the recent designs on when I log in are just mine, but then other yeah. members of the team have got their own ones and said they okay. can't. We can't see each other's yeah yeah um so yeah what you can do then in in that case is if you create a folder if you go into your team space here um and if you create a folder um under whatever the project name is um mm. you can create that folder within your team and then when you're designing something um if you save that to the folder um that should save there right um, okay in Canva uh, that we just created, and then your team should be able to. That's always the way when you do something. <laughs> um, I think I've just, because I've just added an extra team um, as a demonstration here, I think it's just a different, I've got like three teams going. Um, okay. Well, that, that should work. Um, and if okay. that doesn't work, um, I'll put my con uh, contact info in the chat. Um, just feel free to get in touch and I'll help you get to the bottom of it. Okay, thank um, you. But yeah, so try, try the folder um, okay. way or try sharing it via a link. Uh, if you press share here and copy the link uh, and email it to them, um, they should have access to that design then. Okay, thank you. No problem. Uh, is there any other questions in the chat about anything, Laura? Not any more questions. Uh, just Shelley just says it's much clearer now she's moved the participants' faces off the top right of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully, yeah. yeah. The uh, hopefully um, Ethan's rerun of, of of those items, the unlock and the grouping, has kind of uh, made a bit more sense then. Yeah. Um, and and anyone with any. Um, queries at this point the the guide will really just walk you through it um so that's templates uh, and the final section uh, section there of sharing um you all um probably know how to do i won't assume anyone can do everything but um just how you post to instagram or or social media um is that section there um so that is based the main features of canva um really basic features um and I know it can be a lot to take in. And I know because I do it constantly every day, it might have been a bit fast. Um, but the step-by-step -step guide will take you through it. Um, and you can also get this recording back. Um, I'm sure Laura's going to send that with everyone at the end. Um, so you can follow along uh, if you prefer to do things that way. Um, but before we take uh, maybe any final questions um, and hear about um, Claire's experience with Canva, um, I just want to show you a few tools off Canva and a few things you can do to support you uh, when creating some of this stuff. So the first thing is finding inspiration, um, which can come from anywhere. Um, but I'd say as a starting point, if you're just kind of dipping your toe in the water of, of um, taking this creative side of your business um, on, 
um, using websites like Pinterest um, are really helpful. Um, someone when I was in university told me that the more good design you take in, the more good design you'll put out. Um, and that's really true. So if you just spend a bit of time on Pinterest every day, um, maybe you search social media um, or social media templates and save things you like. Um, and like we talked about before, the easiest test of design is, is it grabbing your attention out of everything else? Um, and the more you kind of um, are exposed to these uh, professional templates and these professional designs, um, the more you'll be able to just use your instinct when designing. Um, and these are some other useful resources and these will all be in the guide as well. Um, so Unsplash is free images and photos that you can use in your projects. So Unsplash um, is the website that Canva actually uses to get all their stock images. So a lot of the images that are on Canva will be on Unsplash, but maybe sometimes in Canva search, um, you're not finding quite what you want. If you go onto unsplash.com, um, you can have a more in-depth search there uh, and you can save them um, in folders on your desktop ready to go. Uh, Nappy is another free um, stock photo website. Um, photos of um, people from um, mixed ethnicities, so black people, uh, Asian people, um, and this can really help. Um, it, what your audience wants to see is them reflected in your designs and in your branding. One thing I will say about Unsplash is um, uh, there's some great photographers on there, but a lot of them are Russian um, photographers, so there's not um, a great mix uh, of diversity on there. Um, so just just making sure you're appealing to everyone and you're also um, you know giving people representation in in what you're doing. Um, Coolers uh, is a website like we talked about before. If you've not got the colors for your brand yet or you don't have the color codes, if you go on this website. Um, it's actually a really fun website. You can use it in different designs. It doesn't just have to be for your main branding. Um, it will give you color combinations that work really well together uh, and it will give you the codes for them. And you just refresh it like you would a roulette wheel until you find something you like. Um, and there is also lists on there so you can scroll through um, and see some colors you like. Um, rather than just using kind of the primary colors that Canva has um, set up, uh, if you find something a bit more unique to you, um, it's going to help people recognize you from everything else they're seeing. Uh, Googlefonts.com. So you might not need this because Canva has, we've just seen 3,000 fonts that you can pick from. Um, but for whatever reason, if the one you want isn't in that 3,000, um, Google Fonts have some great free fonts you can download um, to use in your branding and in your designs, and you can upload them. Uh, just like you would with a logo, a colour, um, or a typeface like we did before. Uh, and the final one is pexels.com. So that's free photos and videos. Um, and the videos on pexels are really good, stock videos. Um, I always use pexels if, if uh, I, I can't find stock imagery I'd like. Um, and one, th one thing I'd say um, is like stock image is really great. Um, but if you've got the funding and the resources to work with a photographer, that's something you can do to add um, an extra touch to your brand uh, and make you stand out. Um, yeah, so uh, that, that list will all be in the um, guide as well. Uh, and this here is the final bit from me uh, before we hear from Claire. So this is just um, any support we, I can offer you following on from this session. Um, so on Canva, we can create branding together. Um, maybe if you're looking at when I uploaded the brand kit before and you think, oh, I've actually not got a logo I'm confident with or I've not got a set of colours that um, really... Um, fit with my brand or I've not got a typeface that is really unique to me, then we can work together to bring some of this stuff together on Canva. And um, we can also do one in one to one workshop. So if today was a bit basic for you or following on from today, you'd looking to learn more, then we can offer more in depth support on how uh, you can use some Canva's other tools. Um, we can go through scheduling your social media with Canva's planner. Um, which there's so many scheduling tools out there, um, which I'm sure Laura will tell you about. Um, 
another time. Um, but th there is a way you can do it within Canva if you like to keep everything on the same platform. Um, we can use Canva print to take your designs off screen. So like someone in the chat before talk about, uh, spoke about doing posters and advertising. And um, there's ways you can do that within Canva. Uh, we can design social media templates for you to use. So if the template you want isn't on Canva or you just want something a bit more bespoke to your brand uh, that you can keep using uh, again and again, we can design some really unique templates for you to use on Canva and also Canva workshops uh, for your team and organization. If you've invited them along and they want to know more, um, it's a really helpful tool to get you all designing together. Um, and after this session in the guide, you'll have all my contact info and on that will be a link to where you can book a free one-to-one. -one. Um, so like some of the people who had questions in the chat, um, it's just a free half an hour to talk about anything you want um, about design or anything you want, if you just want to talk for half an hour. Um, but anything you want design related, so just a quick uh, consultation, uh, maybe you don't want to be tied down to a graphic designer, but you've got some questions about how you can use creativity to um, give you a step up, um, or maybe you've got questions about what you even need would need from a graphic designer. Um, so yeah, there's a free half an hour there for any um, third sector organisations. And then on the right side here, we've got things I offer off Canva, um, which is full branding packages. So that's really bespoke stuff um, that I won't be designing on Canva that I'll use design software for. Um, and that's if you just want something really unique to you. You want to go through the whole brand journey from mood boards, colours, um, mission, vision, aims, typography, and everything you need to take your brand forward. Uh, Optimising your social media. Uh, so making sure your social media is working the way it should and it's working for you um, having keywords in the right places having your highlights set up maybe the way you're using your hashtags um, maybe some content that you could be using on a regular basis and um, campaign and fundraiser support so at the minute we're actually doing a campaign um, called um, the stockport christmas care campaign which is a campaign uh, for care leavers in stockport um, you can find that on Facebook at Stockport Christmas. Um, website design and support. So we do full website design um, and we also support you in um, refreshing the website you've already got um, and making that work for you. Uh, social media content that we just spoke about. Uh, animation and branding videos. So that's if you've got any explainer videos you need um, or any animation you'd want uh, created for your business um, and packaging and print support as well, because working with printers can be difficult if you don't know what they're talking about. Um, so that's everything from me. And if anyone's got any final questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. I think if we just, Claire, if it's all right, if we can just, uh, if you've got anything to add or share about your experiences, maybe, you know, for a few minutes um, while people kind of get their questions together and, and, and type through, um, yeah, feel free to share anything extra that you want to add. Yeah, absolutely. So um, thank you, Ethan. That was fantastic. Really comprehensive guide through Canva. Um, and I've learned something now as well. So that, that's really good to know. Um, and I will only be a couple of minutes because I'm just aware of time. But I think um, probably a bit on the other end to where Ethan is in that I'm obviously from Stockport Credit Union and I've got no marketing experience whatsoever. So when I started at the credit union two years ago and, and I was kind of looking after the credit, the um, social media amongst the rest of the bits and pieces that I did, it was quite daunting. Um, and, I, and I guess some of the guys on the call today might feel a bit like I did then, just a bit like, what? where do I even start? I had no idea about how big the marketing world was and, and everything involved in it. Um, so if I can I just share my screen so that I can just kind of show yeah sure let me just make it. it um just because somebody recommended can canva to me as a tool that we could use for our social media um and I, I think the past two years I've been kind of experimenting and, and I completely run all our social media so the, the Twitter LinkedIn and Facebook and whatnot um just go on screen share to show so I think really for me, this is just to anybody that's feeling a bit intimidated on the Canva. So I just want to show you that this is the first Facebook post that I did, if it's come in. Um, that's not a post, that's actually, do you know the Facebook banner for across the top? 
and and let's be fair it's a bit rubbish isn't it? <laughs> but you know it, it's experimenting and just trying it out um and then I'm just going to go back and show you the one that we've got now because I just think it's a lot better and I just think it shows how how much you you know by playing around um you do just find yourself being a lot better at it and having an eye for, for detail and whatnot. So that's what ours looks like now. So you can see it's miles better, isn't it? It literally just says what, what it is, what we do. Um, so just go back into our... Thanks for sharing that, Claire. That's really, that's really nice as well, I guess, to kind of share your experience and how, you know, you were perhaps not as confident you know when you first started using it but you've obviously kind of grown in confidence and it's just that kind of using it regularly I guess and kind of not being afraid to to yeah experiment definitely it's a, it's a fantastic tool um I found it really good so you can see on our screen the type of posts we do now and what I thought was quite funny before is I think this is the post that you was looking at Ethan is it with the lady in it um so we I obviously liked the look of this one as well because I picked it to use it and you can see how I've turned that into a credit union post. It looks very different to what your post looks like. But I think the fact that there's templates there that I've already done, it really means that you can just kind of put your own take on it. But the marketing experience that's been put in the post already, you don't really need. You can just put your words in it. Um, so, yeah, I guess, um, again, I'm just a bit wary of time, but I would just say, you know, as an amateur um I think it's fantastic too. I use it all the time. It's easy to use. Um, so yeah, great stuff. And thank you very much, Ethan. I found that really um, informative. Oh, oh, thanks thank for sharing Claire. that, Claire. Really useful. Yeah, really useful to kind of understand kind of your experience as well. Um, I'm going to throw it out to everyone and the well the room in terms of questions. Does everyone? Does anyone have any questions? I mean, maybe if you, I don't know if you can raise your hand on Zoom, but um, maybe if you kind of just um, kind of feel free to come off mute and kind of ask Ethan directly. Yeah, um, feel free to ask and I'm just gonna put my information in the chat now. So if anything comes up while you're doing any of this that you wanna check with me, um, feel free to check in. And perhaps if you've got something a bit more specific that you kind of probably want to, you know, have a good natter with uh, Ethan with, then obviously he's, he is offering these um, free one-to-one -one sessions that he mentioned before. So, you know, you can kind of book onto one of those to get a more in-depth, um, got more time from Ethan, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And all that information's <laughs> in that link there. So feel free. That's what we're there for. And I'll send that link out with the, um, with with the, the guide as well. Kind of information, yeah. Yeah, great. Cool. Can I... Can I take it from that then? There's currently no questions from people. Is that right? I don't want to miss anyone. Okay, I think I think there's no questions, but maybe you might get a few one-to-one -one requests. Pam says, great session, just, just want to have a go now. Yeah, it kind of makes you want to like get going and kind of do your own things, doesn't it? Uh, Lynn says, thanks very much, really useful. I'm heading off to upload my brand kit. Great. Great. It's a pleasure to do that. I mean, I, that is, I mean, thank you, Ethan, like as well, you know, not only kind of showing how easy it is and, and, you know, the kind of quick tools that you can use, like the brand kit, you know, I use Canva and I don't, I haven't currently got the brand kit uploaded, but now I can see how easy it is to actually, instead of adding my colors each time, you know, I, I can just go and go into the brand kit. So yeah, well, I'll definitely be doing that after this session. Um, but also, you know, the little kind of tips you mentioned about, um, you know, kind of how to get your, how to beat the algorithm, I guess, on kind mm -hmm. of Instagram and stuff. That's really useful. So um, yeah, and, yeah, and things like that, social media, there's a whole other session, I'm sure, um, that could take that up. Um, yeah. Little things like that to bear in mind will all be in the guide as well. Um, so yeah, so thanks, Ethan, uh, for sharing uh, all your knowledge. Um, just a final note from me, we do have a, the final in this kind of webinar series, uh, the marketing workshop series from sector three uh, we've got one on the 24th of november that's wednesday uh, from 10 to 11 30 and that is the uh getting the um getting the best out of your email marketing platform so we'll be talking about things like mailchimp and and the kind of tools that you can use and how you can use mailchimp to really kind of connect with your audiences um 
so yeah i'll also share that in that registration link in the um, post event email but um yeah i'll kind of let you all go and um yeah thank you for uh yeah thank you for attending thank you everyone all right